2021 goals. It's the new year, and we all have plenty of things we want to do for this upcoming year. And maybe you've set a New Year's resolution to do something about your debt or to save more money or something like that. Well, it's all well and good, but how do you make it more than just empty words uttered into the air? Well, you have to set goals and then take action. In this video, I'm going to go over setting up realistic goals versus unrealistic ones, goal setting versus resolutions, why goal setting is more concrete, and how to set real concrete goals that will help you hit your quote unquote resolution targets, and why long term why long-term goals like resolutions may not be the best idea if you're new to setting New Year's goals. And finally, take a look at some tangible financial goals that you might want to hit for this new year. So gently, lovingly, and tenderly hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get into the content. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Before we even do that, you're watching Finance Squared and I'm your host, Derek West. We love talking all things personal finance here on YouTube and a big, big part of personal finance is creating good habits and setting up realistic yet ambitious goals that you can consistently measure yourself against. Like we say at the end of every video, a goal without a plan is a wish and a goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Now I heard the first part of that statement watching a 30 for 30 documentary from ESPN on how athletes, at least athletes during the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s would mostly blow through their money for the you know for the most part with a couple of rare exceptions you know you have your magic johnson's michael jordan's wilt chamberlain's of the world those guys were the exception but not the rule and during that special an nfl analyst now i think a head coach for arizona or something named herm edwards made that statement the statement being a goal without a plan is a wish and that statement hit me like a ton of bricks the truth of it was just so profound he's not saying that wishes never come true they obviously do people do win the lottery people accidentally stumble upon good fortune of all kind. But his point is, was, I believe, in my mind at least, is that relying on just creating the goal in your mind and thinking to yourself that's all you have to do, then chances are that that quote unquote goal you just created will more than likely not happen. You have to make it concrete by making a plan. And it becomes even more concrete when you take action on that plan, which is where the second part, which I came up with, comes in. And that is how you can tell if your goal is realistic or not. If you can't come up with a reasonable plan to put into action in a specific time frame, then your goal is not realistic. For example, if you work for minimum wage today, flipping burgers or, you know, being a clerk at 7-Eleven, those are good jobs to have, by the way, not saying anything bad about them. But if you have those occupations and you say to yourself, I want to earn, I want to earn $1 billion this year, US dollars, not Zimbabwe dollars, that is an unrealistic goal. One because very few people actually earn $1 billion in a lifetime. You are unlikely to earn it in one year. And two, if your earning power up to this moment is only minimum wage, you will need to increase it several orders of magnitude to hit that goal in one year. The good news about all that is that it's a great way to reverse engineer success. Set an outrageous, audacious, unrealistic goal. Figure out what it will take to accomplish and then from those steps that you come up with, set more realistic goals. More on this technique in a moment. But this takes us to goal setting versus resolutions. Goal setting, when done and executed properly, is an excellent way to create mile markers for things that you really want to get done and truly manifest them in your life depending on your circumstances. Resolutions tend to be more ephemeral, where there is no real way to accomplish what it is you resolve to accomplish. You know, whether it's to lose more weight or to save more money. It may be a deeply held resolution in your heart but if you can't think of a pathway on how to do it, then likely you'll have a hard time accomplishing it. When you set goals, true goals, not wishes or wish lists, you're setting yourself up to succeed in whatever endeavor you choose to engage in. And more importantly, you can measure whether or not you hit them. And if you missed them, you can readjust your strategy and attack your goal from a different angle. Goal setting is more flexible than resolutions. If you fail your New Year's resolution out of the gate, you fail at your New Year's resolution and that's just an unfortunate circumstance in your life. It hurts your psychological view of yourself. Maybe it was something you couldn't accomplish given your current circumstances. You can adjust that goal and you can try again and you can keep adjusting and trying again until you make the goal that you want to hit. Resolutions are like declarations from Congress or Parliament, depending on what part of the world you live in, when they're too chicken to pass a law about something, like declaring that puppies are nice. You know, it's a fine gesture and it's great that you're thinking big, but put some teeth behind it. Both Congress and you 
and try and hit your goals, leading us to how to set goals. First, we wanna start off with breaking down goals into time frames. So how do you set goals that you can actually hit and make concrete improvements upon? Start with taking inventory on where you are in respect to your goal. We're a personal finance channel, so a lot of the examples I'm gonna use are gonna revolve around stuff in that regard. So bear with us. In any case, if, you, if your goal is to have $5,000 invested, look into your investment account. How much do you have invested? How much money can you set aside weekly to invest? Do you even have an investment account to begin with? Are the answers zero, zero, and no? If yes, then you have some work to do and you might wanna set a simpler goal that you can accomplish first with your $5,000 goal being the larger, more forward-thinking goal. In reality, a more realistic goal would be to find some place in your budget that you could save $100 a week to invest. Now, why $100, you may ask? Because there are 52 weeks approximately in a year, you know, 365 divided by seven. And if you could invest $100 a week by the end of the year, you would have $5,000 invested. Another more realistic goal would be to create a budget where you put aside $100 a week for investing, which would net you $5,000 after a year. Are you starting to see how setting more concrete goals in the end is more actionable than more ephemeral goals? This is powerful stuff, folks. If you're getting value out of this, tickle that like button for the YouTube algorithm. But the idea behind realistic goal setting is to break down your goals into achievable time boxed steps and put each step into the quote unquote plan of hitting the larger goal. Each step that you try and hit, you can measure it yourself. If you can't hit that particular step, then you readjust to hit some goal that you can, that you can make given your current circumstances, at which point you try again, and then you rinse and then you repeat. Now you have a realistic plan to eventually hit your long-term goal of $5,000 a year. And now you can measure your progress. And by measuring yourself, once you're taking action, you can now adjust your goal up or down based on your current ability to hit that goal. At which point you can add a new step to hit your goal based on that. And that takes us to time boxing. And no, this is not the syncretic equivalent of shadow boxing, but time boxing is the art of giving yourself a specific window to accomplish a particular goal. There are two schools of thought on time boxing and goal. The first one is that you should choose the goal that fits the time box. And the second school of thought is that you should choose the time box that fits the goal. What's the difference? Now, they both have the pluses and minuses. And frankly, they're both very similar to each other. You would select the one that is more likely to help you reach a goal. A time boxing that fits the goal, this is about taking inventory on where you are right now and what the level of effort it will be to hit your next goal. This is about taking inventory on where you are right now and what the level of effort it will take to hit your next goal will be. And then estimating how much time it will take, at which point you say to yourself, I will accomplish this task in this amount of time. The positive about that approach is that you give yourself the time that you think you need to make progress on that task or goal. The negative is that as humans, we tend to overestimate how long it will take for us to reach a certain goal all the time. And what's worse, we tend to make that reality. And even worse than that, we tend to go over the estimates that we give. If you have ever had two weeks to write a paper or content for a YouTube channel, and you procrastinated for 12 days out of those two weeks and crammed and stayed up late to get all that work done, then you know exactly what I mean. If you had given yourself maybe four days, you would not have had to cram and you still would have gotten all the work done. But because you were given two weeks, you spent all of your time doing everything except the paper or whatever it was you were assigned to do which means you would have been better off if you had fit the goal within a time box. Now, this is a common practice in modern software engineering shops, the ones that I've worked in anyway. And if I've not mentioned before, I'm a software engineer by trade. But this practice is called Scrum, and you typically take a defined time period, and you design your goal to fit into this time period. In the software engineering world, it's delivering a feature to a usable environment for your customer. Let's say like delivering a new feature to an app that your company owns or that you own, and getting it to the app store. You try and pick a goal that will be achievable in a time frame. Let's say, as an example, two weeks, and you prioritize which goals you can accomplish and focus only on those, with the other goals to be hit when you have the time. And this is where prioritization comes in. You see, if everything is super important to you, then nothing is really important to you. You only have 24 hours in a day, and you spend eight of those sleeping. So the truth is, you can really only get so much done in a certain time frame. Now that's not a bad thing. You just have to pick which things you want to do first, maintain a list of the things that you want to accomplish next, and focus only on the ones you want to accomplish first, first, and tackle the rest in order. You might discover, as you're working on your most important goal, 
that your priorities change and the goals that were last on the list get bumped down even further as other more pressing matters come up. That's also fine. You simply work on those things next in your priority list and you keep advancing down that list. You know what's next on your list of priorities? Check out the videos linked on the screen. In it, I talk about why setting New Year's resolutions may be suboptimal for you and how choosing reasonably timed goals is way more important. Sort of topical to this discussion that we're having right now. And also be sure to click subscribe and to enable post notifications as I'm gonna continue this topic by talking about reasonable personal financial goals for you to hit this new year. You see? You see, as I started filming this thing, I quickly realized that this video is starting to get really long. I can talk about goal setting and personal finances all day, but I need to keep you viewers engaged and more importantly, wanting more. So take a couple of days break, come back and we'll dive into that important topic. But remember, as I said in the beginning of this video, I like to end each one of these videos by saying that a goal without a plan is a wish and a goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your goals this year and make all your wishes come true. Happy New Year, each and every one of you from all of us here at Finance Square. Peace.